Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and welcome to a subscriber's request about explaining displacement in Maya. So what exactly is displacement, how to use it, and also what is the difference between displacement, a bump map, and a normal map? If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. And if this is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with what exactly is displacement. So displacement basically means that you are going to plug in a black and white image and it will in fact displace the geometry of the object. So usually when we apply a bump map, it does not affect the silhouette, but a displacement map will in fact rise and fall the geometry so it impacts the silhouette. Another thing I want to touch on is the textures themselves. This is the color map also known as albedo. This is the occlusion map. This is known as a height map, which can be used as a displacement map. This is what a normal map looks like. And this is the roughness map. So a normal map basically looks like a rainbow and it gives you depth information. And a height map can be used to either use as a bump map or as a displacement map, which I'm gonna show you basically both. That is the theory behind it. Let's go ahead and implement it. So I'm going to start off with these spheres and these are just exact same spheres. And I'm going to assign a new Arnold AI standard surface. I'm going to call this one the, the bump shader, crank it all the way up to white. I am going to increase the roughness because the roughness can be a little bit distracting. So I am going to put the roughness around 0.5 and let's see what it looks like when we add a bump map, which is a black and white image. I'm going to go to geometry over here. We have a bump map. I'm going to click on this I'm going to go to file, click on the little bump value here, click on that, go to that little folder. And because I have my project selected, I can select, I'm just going to grab the height map as an example, and then click open. I do encourage you guys to change this into raw. And you also might want to open up color balance and make sure alpha luminance is on person number six on your keyboard. And you will see that we have this texture here. So when we talk about a bump map, and in this case, it's a height map, anything white rises and anything dark sinks in. But if you take a look at the silhouette, you'll notice that it has the exact same silhouette as the sphere. If I press the number three on the keyboard, we even get a smoother sphere. So I'm going to press three on both of them. Now, because it's always nice to see how to render, I'm going to go ahead and render. Uh, and create a physical sky under Arnold Light's physical sky. And I also know that usually I need to increase my intensity. So I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 1.5. And I'm going to render by going to Arnold Render. All right, this is the effect so far. Now I do have this, uh, the dome. You can see the dome, select the dome. I'm going to go scroll down to visibility and change camera to zero which will make the background black, which means I can get a alpha map. So for example, if I click here, which is going to give me the alpha, you'll notice that it's hundred percent white. That means that I can't really see what the silhouette of the objects look like. So let me re-render it with camera zero and see what it looks like. All right, looks cool. Let's go ahead and take an alpha map. You can see that the silhouette is the same. You'll notice that even though it looks like it's rising and falling, there's nothing really happening to the object. It's actually, the silhouette is still the same. So it may look like in front of the camera that it's got depth, but it actually doesn't affect it, which is great for, for details such as wrinkles, moles, things like that on your clothes, um, just small details. But if you really want to make this look like stone sticking out of something, you might want to consider displacement. Now, when we talk about displacement, you also have to think about render times. Right now, it is only six seconds, which is not bad at all. Um, but we do have to think about that displacement doesn't really work great in game engines. Um, that's improving, but right now it is too expensive to do real time. Displacement usually works is through rendering. So when you hit that play button, it actually renders the image. But let's go ahead and take a look at a normal map and see how that normal map looks like on a sphere. And then we'll go and do displacement. So let me duplicate this sphere, just scoot it over. Um, I'm going to assign a new material. Again, we're going to choose an Arnold AI standard surface. This is going to be my normal shader. I'm going to click on this output. Let's go ahead and go to file. The big one is to make sure that you change this to tangent space normals and you probably want to flip the R. I have a whole tutorial about all of this, so please take a look at that. But that's basically what you can do to make sure it renders correctly. Click on this connection. 
I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Let's hit that folder and grab a normal map. Again, change this to raw. And this is what a normal map looks like. Now in real time, which is what we're looking at right now, it looks great, way better and stronger than a bot map, but it still doesn't impact the silhouette. So this is the reason why games use normal maps. Normal maps are fantastic for games because it's all done in real time. Let me hide my light here. So you can see that they both look pretty cool, but let's render. It's always really interesting to see the difference between a butt map and normal map and how they render. So you'll notice that I forgot to make this a little bit rough, but you'll notice that it looks like it's got more depth information. So you can tell much clearer what the top and the bottom is of this object. So this is a bump map over here to the left. This is a normal map. And this is the reason why a lot of people are now focusing on normal maps is because it can get you a lot more variation. It's a lot stronger. Now, the only issue with normal maps is that you have to generate it using a computer. With bump maps, you can actually create them really fast in Photoshop or whichever. But if you're using Substance Painter, creating normal maps is actually relatively fast. So again, if we take a look at the silhouette, nothing has changed. It's still the same. It's an illusion. This height information isn't real. It doesn't affect the silhouette of the object. It just makes it look like it's rising and falling when it's facing the camera. Okay, now let's talk about this placement. So I'm going to assign a new material, Arnold AI standard surface. Ooh, let me bring this back to roughness, go back to my normal shader. And I just don't want to forget to change my roughness. And I'm going to do the same here. Displacement shader. All right. So how do we connect our displacement shader? Well, there's a couple of ways. One of them is by clicking on this little connection right here, which will take you to the SG node. The SG node will take you to what's called the surface volume or displacement material. Here is where we can attach the displacement. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this little checker, click on file, just like what we've done before. Um, in this case, you'll notice that it did attach a displacement node, which is important. Click on this little connection. It's kind of like a bump node. Click on this little image and I am going to grab the height map. Now you'll notice that there is no preview because it's very hard to preview. I'm going to change this into raw. Everything else looks good. And let's see what that looks like with a render. And you can see that we are getting some silhouette changes. First of all, the height and depth information is all the way across. Whatever happens on the left side happens on the right side and is very clear in the front, unlike one of the normal maps or the bump map where it's really clear at the big, at the front of the camera, but it starts to lose its information as you get further away from the camera. You'll notice that ink did increase the size of the sphere. So it used to be small and now it's a lot larger. So this is the comparison. So it's got larger. That's because of the inflation of the displacement map. Now we can make the displacement map a lot cleaner. And to do that, I'm going to show you how we can accomplish that. The first thing you can do is increase the amount of geometry you have on your objects. So let me go ahead and take a snapshot so we can compare. So I'm going to go ahead and go to mesh smooth and I'm going to just double, I'm going to increase my divisions to two, which escalates the division of the object really, really uh, quite a great deal, but let's see what it looks like when we render. So that took about 10 seconds and you can see that the details are significantly clearer because of the amount of geometry because now the map, there's more geometry for it to work with. So this is another reason why it's very hard for games to use displacement map is because you need to have a lot more geometry. All right. So let me undo that because there's other options I want to show you. Let me go ahead and undo that. Great. Another place that you can manipulate the shader is through the displacement material node. Let me go back one. Here it is. And we can actually reduce the scale. So right now the scale is at one. If I change this to 0.5, it will reduce the size or the impact of the shader. So let's see what that looks like. Cool. Let me take a snapshot of this. I forgot to take a snapshot of the other one, but that's okay. So you can see that the map resolution has been cut in half so that you can control your scale a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and change this back into one. So if your displacement map is way over the top, changing the scale will kind of will calm it down. And it happens a lot. Sometimes the texture is so high contrast, like black and white, because mine is more grayscale. You'll get some really dramatic changes. So this will be one way to control it. Another way is through the geometry itself. So here I am taking a look at my sphere. And if we scroll down, there's something called Arnold. 
And if we keep scrolling down, there's, we have subdivisions, displacement attributes, and auto bump. So what's really great about this is that we can actually use a low resolution object and choose a subdivision called Cat Clark, which it's a great name. And we can increase this iterations to three, which is going to pretend that this object actually has more geometry than it actually has. Instead of smoothing the sphere so that it has more geometry, you'll be able to have the similar effect with Cat Clark. So let's take a look at that. So now you can see that this is what it was before. This is what it is now. This is what we had before as well. So you can see that, I mean, this has dark shadows, but it's not really great. This actually gives you a nice clean render. I can also go down to the height and reduce it. So for example, if I want to reduce it to 0.7, I can. And I can also enable um, auto bump. So let's see what that looks like. All right, there you go. Pretty neat. This is what we had before. This is what we have now. Pretty neat. So that's displacement, and you can still see how it actually impacts the silhouette of the object. So it, in fact, adds geometry to the object. So now that we understand all of these objects, let's go ahead and use our shader that we have here, or just build a new one and add everything to it. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and assign a new material. Uh, this is going to use, this is going to be my cobblestone. I'm going to go to color, click on the little output, File, folder, use albedo. If you want to, you can change this to raw because sometimes you get a different look. Uh, let's go ahead and increase my roughness to about, actually we have a roughness map. So let's click on this connection. File, folder, roughness. Make sure this is raw. Make sure alpha illuminance is on. Should I? Maybe I should show you guys what all of this looks like. So let me focus here. Let me take a render. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but I pause every time I'm about to render just because it slows down my CPU. And I don't think you need to watch 11 seconds of rendering. It's kind of boring. So uh, I usually pause so that you guys can see the effect. So this is what we have so far. All right, let's scroll down. Let's go to geometry. Um, actually, I'm going to skip geometry and I'm going to go to displacement. So we're going to go over here. There's my displacement, click on that little file, click over here, scroll up, click on that folder, grab the height map, make sure this is raw. Alpha Luna should be on. And I'm just gonna see the effect and then make some changes. So this is what we had before, this is what we have now. You can see that it's impacted the geometry um, if you want to, you can reduce the scale here, but I'm going to go to my shader or to my object. I'm going to scroll down and use what we just learned, which is the cat Clark and just crank this up to three. All right. This is what we have so far with cat Clark three. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and press stop. I'm going to reduce the height just a little bit by maybe 0.8. I'm also going to scroll down and enable bump map and let's see what that looks like. It's looking really nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks like an actual cobblestone. Now, the next question you may be asking is, can I use a normal map as, or a bump map as well on top of this? Because there's a lot of detail in a normal map that you would like to add to the displacement map. And the answer is yes. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going back to my shader. Here's my bump map. Click on this little connection. Go to file. Don't forget to stop the render. And I'm going to go to tangent space normal because I'm going to use a normal map. I am going to go to flip bar, turn that off, go to the folder, grab the normal map, change this to raw, make sure alpha luminance is on, and let's see what we get. Let's take a snapshot and let's take a look. All right, cool. This is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Pretty nice details. Not sure why this one's so blurry, but um, you can see that it has some extra detail on there and it's looking really, really nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at it in a sphere. So I'm going to duplicate the sphere. I'm going to assign an existing material. This one is going to be my cobblestone shader so we can see the effect that it has. And let's take a render. And here you go, guys, displacement. You can see on the sphere that it's actually impacting the silhouette of the object. You're getting some really nice, accurate textures and displacement and a normal map to help 
uh, create more information. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Let me see if I can get a better render here. And there you go. We have displacement, we have albedo, we have roughness, we have normal maps, we have a bunch of textures assigned to the shader to make it look photorealistic and beautiful. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this and hopefully this has demystified the difference between a bump map, a normal map, and a displacement map. So again, thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed making this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it too. If you're interested in downloading free videos or uh, free 3D models, please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can sign up for my newsletter, but also you can find uh, 3D models and so much more. If you found these videos helpful and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. That's your message to me, letting me know that you like these videos and that you want to see more. And it also helps me out a little bit. So again, thank you so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.